Welcome, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the Facebook group, the International Brotherhood of Polyvarns, as well as Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, uh, the founder of the, uh, the group, among other groups, not just Facebook, but uh, um, on Twitter and YouTube and uh, um, now Tumblr. Uh, progressive discussions. I created this particular group as well as the other Facebook groups in 2012 uh, before I was sabotaged by a neoliberal, uh, uh, not an alpha male, let's put it that way, a pussy, a pussy that loved Hillary Clinton that, that, that ratted me out, that ratted me out and caused me to lose everything Years of hard work, all because of risque photographs of Ric Flair's uh, daughter that she posted. She took selfies of herself, of herself in a hotel room. I put them on my group where I thought the particular group had no rules because I set it up that way. And apparently, you, you do not have total control o over the groups that you manage and create. Guess, guess who has total control at all times? Oh. Hey, Ricardo. The, hey, Ricardo. No. The no, the big hawk nose, uh, control free geek, Mark Zuckerberg, has control over even your own groups that you create. You have no control. So somebody could rat you out, and it's their word against yours, and Facebook always takes the word of the complainer. Rat <laughs> me out. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's like it, 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 it's a, it's a it's a fascist dictatorship. It's gonna be payback. It's gonna be payback. <laughs> it's a fa it's a fascist dictatorship. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's not a democracy on uh, certain web pages like Facebook. Uh, I never have drama on Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, Google. I never had dr have drama only on the control freak, uh, controlled by the member of the quote unquote tribe, the tribal member with the hawk mm -hmm. nose. That's where, you I know. Mean, I yeah, you know, I, I we we used to have of billions of dollars. We used to have a big mouth, insulting a uh, 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 geek in school with a very high IQ. His name was Eugene, of course, Eugene Hoyas, and he used to get be he used to get beat up by all the jocks because he used to call he used to call them uh, you know uh, uh, all kinds of names, uh, 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 saying that they were you know. They were um, stupid, they had no brains, and blah, 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 and he, he had a high IQ, so they used to rough him up. Now, I so think... He's looking for some of those jocks right now, right? I think Mark Zuckerberg was probably one of them that got beat up in school, but I, I would have loved to, to, to uh, give him the back of my hand uh, a thousand times if I went to school with him back then. I would have loved, because I know, I know he is using the internet and the money he swindled uh, through spamming, allowing spamming and scamming, I know he's using it as a penile extension, as, as a, uh, a form of testicles. He's using his power on the uh, internet. But anyway, seven lucky bells for this week's live show to keep the demons away, the hotel bell representing the Hilton Hotel on Polly Fly Road in Hasbro Kites, New Jersey, uh, the New Jersey uh, uh, branch office of my host, Mr. Jeff Zambello. How are you this week, sir? Outstanding. I'm, I'm ready for a, a great show tonight. There's going to be lots of piss, vinegar, and camel toes tonight. That's right. 
And, and I also have the world's largest and loudest jingle bell. I, I took it out of mothballs. Jesus, the, the cord just snapped. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can still hear you. Oh, but you know what? I can easily fix that. I, I, got, I got some strong polypropylene cord and I will fix this little bugger. Wait a minute. All right, you know what? It, it will have to go into the repair shop for now, but. Well, uh, are you talking about a, um, well, a, a spermatozoom? Because that is singular for a spermatozoa. I believe spermatozoom is the term for one, sp uh, one sperm, one scum guppy. Uh, according to Dr. Ruth Westheimer, she says all it takes is one uh, spermatozoon to, uh, fertilize, to uh, fertilize an egg. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so a hockey puck, yes, a hockey puck. Um, so I guess a pearl necklace doesn't count, but we still have to pay for dinner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, dinner and a yeah. dinner and a crotch tail. Oh, I should say cocktail. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, Donald Boos. Donald Boos has joined us. Oh, hey, let, I hope we just get the Golden Cape on award. I hope there's lots of contributions. Hi, Donald. I, the Donald Boos, uh, formerly of I du want to see some bikinis there on the cruise ship. Formerly of uh, Dumont, New Jersey, now residing in San Diego, California. Will he say something? Or will he be inducted into the castrated Capon Award? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh -huh. I know Pratt Ye Singh appeared, and uh, I was, I held back uh, uh, about inducting him because. He, he's a great uh, Akara. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, and he contributes also to the, to the, the Brotherhood of Balaban page. Uh, she is a great Akara, uh, a well-experienced Akara practitioner. Uh, he might be a grand, a grand poo. He might be a grand poobah. Uh, he, he might have a high rank in the Akara, but he has a lot of experience. So I... I where is um, Kashi getting booked? Well, Kashi's coming. Kashi's a coming. Kashi, well, maybe more ways than one. <laughs> He's a coming more ways than one. Get, get it, Jeff? It's a little, little, little Jack Horner joke. He, no. I need to hear that. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, yes, uh, Kashi is a coming, no pun intended, this April in uh, um, southeastern Connecticut, uh, 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 United States of America, at your... At, at, <laughs> I love this stuff. Connecticut, oh, Connecticut. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he will be uh, doing his great seminar in the U.S. of A. for the first time at Yuri's gym, and he will be... Uh, he, he's being flown in by Donna King, the, mm -hmm. the promoter of uh, alternative and circular training, otherwise known as Kelly Calzone, but I call her Donna King, that's her stage name. And the whole little, little, uh, little juice heart. Anyway, it is now time for our official uh, consumer advocate, Sucker Patrol. Okay, that's the new whistle. The Sucker Patrol will begin. Now, I just want to tell everyone before I begin our uh, consumer advocate sucker patrol that I have some delicious Valenzano winery cranberry wine, 100% cranberry wine from Valenzano Winery of South in, 
in South Jersey. They also make an outstanding blueberry wine, which I have inside. I will sit. I'm an oxidant um, to it, but I'm Things. Antioxidant rich. Antioxidant. And also uncle oxidants besides antioxidant. Hold up. Mmm. Oh wow. Gee whiz. That is I'm jealous. That's definitely cranberry and it's definitely cranberry wine. So wow. so so when you ferment a high antioxidant blueberry and cranberry. Wow. By making it a wine, the, I, I am sure that accelerates its medicinal uh, functionality. And, yeah. and when you watch the video, uh, manana, you will see my fancy special wine glass uh, for this show. Um, and uh, I it's decided. A good show. Well, this show. It's going to have an exponential effect. Right now, now it, uh, this time I'm using the fancy wine glass instead of the uh, Polyvon Paisley mug because I'm not drinking anything that would uh, require a mug. I just I wanted to add a little class by. If there's a mug, you might be called a bully. Oh, oh, because I'm drinking cranberry wine, I might be accused of being a bully. Mm -hmm. You know, because because maybe maybe they might think. That the alcohol is affecting our judgment and the things we say, like no, uh, no, this is the way I really am. <laughs> no, you mean, I'm enjoying myself. I don't need no. I don't need any help. Well, like a Mr. Taraz, Mr. In me. Miss, Mr. Taraz, Mr. Taraz of Perth, Australia, accused me of being a bully because I exposed. His malarkey over there on uh, Rosewater Kinetics, Mike Rominski's website about the elite uh, materials, the the the, bet, the finest wood money can buy. Well, even though he doesn't buy it, he gets it for free. The finest wood available, making the finest Indian clubs and Persian meals. Meanwhile, they crack uh, just by staring at them, just by looking at them, they crack. And uh, like Herman Munster, when he, before he used to go to work, he used to look in the mirror and say, oh, you handsome devil, you, and then the mirror would crack. <laughs> it would. Yeah, but you had a pretty hot wife. It would share. Oh, yes, uh, Yvonne DiCarlo and his, his niece, Marilyn. Don't forget. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, even though they called her the ugly duckling of the family. Yes, yeah, so her question, would you like her? Uh, Ginger or Marianne? I like I like Marianne because she showed her belly. I like when a woman shows her her navel, her her belly and her hip bones and all that. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. She she had that farm. She had that roll in the hay farm girl look, Marianne. Hmm. You know, and uh, I just want to uh, uh, start with a little consumer advocate. I want everyone to beware and no and take notice that quite often if you shop at Walmart and you look at the price tag on the shelf, quite often when they scan it at the register, the price is much higher. And most people will say, ah, I don't feel like, I don't feel like waiting for the manager. Just I'll pay it and I gotta go. I think that's a scam. I think the Walton family of Walmart rigs it that way. So people do say, oh, don't, I don't have time to wait for the manager. I'll pay the price and leave. Okay. Mm. I think so because I went three times. I went through the self checkout section of Walmart, you know, where mm. they, they, you know, where they lay off cashiers and you have, you do yeah, it. Yeah, Home Depot's doing that. Have you noticed what Home Depot's doing that? No more cashiers? Yeah, you got, they want you to scan the item yourself. Okay. Now, Walmart's self, self checkout. Three different occasions, Jeff, they gave me the wrong change. And then when I went to tell the, the front end manager, she's giving me a dirty look like, I, I says, no, I got the wrong change, look. I, you know, it's like, what, what's going on here? Uh, okay, another thing. If somebody buys you a gift card from a retail store, a retail chain, mm. read the fine print on the gift card because I was given a gift card 
for Christmas by a relative, and lo and behold, what did I find? I found an expiration date on a gift card. How could there be an expiration date on a gift card if the person paid a flat amount for the gift card? In other words, the gift card has a specific value, Jeff Sambello. Oh my God. Like in other words, you, you buy a $50 gift card from a retail chain, right? That yeah. gift card is supposed to have the value of $50. Right. Now, what if the person doesn't, doesn't liquidate, uh, doesn't use the gift card in a timely fashion? Right, because life happens. Okay. Yeah, so what does that mean? Ah, oh, the gift card expires, which means the, the, the sleazy retail uh, corporation keeps your $50 on the gift card. They, no, they don't keep it. They steal your $50. Government has to stop buckling down on these. These government scams. That is a scam, Jeff Sambello. Speak yeah, but which brainchild, or what type of brainchild at these evil corporations would do such a thing to poor people or to old people? Uh, 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 do you imagine giving someone that to, to somebody's grandmother or somebody's uh, uh, mother that's in her, you know, an elderly woman? And then the, the poor lady goes to the gift store uh, to, to get a gift, uh, something she needs. And, you know, people, the, the working people don't have a lot of disposable income. Yeah, and then what's going to happen is they're going to say, oh, your gift, your, gift card, your gift card is worthless. Sorry, you can't use your gift card. Oh, why no, can't I? It's not because it's, it's, it's cash. It is cash. It is cash. It's like as long as, that, as long as that company's still in business, that's cash. It's like it's like when when you go to the casino, the, you don't have coins flowing out of the machine anymore, a slot machine. You get a voucher, you get a ticket, and then you yeah. go to the cash machine because heaven forbid they should hire personnel, right? So you go to the cash oh. machine, you stick it in the machine, and then the machine eats. Uh, what if it like eats up your voucher and you get nothing, and then? I know. You know what I'm saying? It's a scam. It's a scam because because there's no consumer protection uh, these days. Now speaking, why don't you write a letter to the Attorney General of New Jersey? Right. That's your consumer advocate, right? That's why you have an Attorney General. And explain the situation. You know, what the hard earned after tax money bought you a gift card. Uh, yeah, if somebody buys you a gift card, it's not supposed to expire. It's supposed to no. be worth, as long as that company is in business, that that sleazy retail company is in business, that Employees gift card. expose that retail company. Well, the retail company uh, uh, happened to uh, go, from what I understand, they 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 went belly up within the past year. They did. They really did go. Oh, belly. There yeah. are. Let me think now. Um, it, it was it was a chain. It was a retail chain, and they were, they were toys. So it's not toys around. Well, no, no. They were bought out. They were uh, bought out by a larger retail company, and they. It's probably owned by Warren Buffett. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. It was one of those uh, uh, ch uh, nationwide chains that, uh, and, you know, as time went by, they decided to, to sell sell it out. And uh, um, let me think now. Um, Anyways, we are sure to do here, so screw, screw those people. Yeah, no, it really. It, it, General New Jersey, see what you can do. Yeah, it really was. It really was a. A retail chain with different locations. They just happen to get bought out by a bigger company. Um, but uh, I am it's sure. Like an automotive company called BMW parking their cars all over the street. But meanwhile, you know, nobody yeah. else can park their cars that pay taxes. Yeah. But I, I just want to warn everyone that gets a gift card from any retail chain, even the big ones, please. 
look for the fine print and read it. You know what I'm saying? Read it and, and, and read it right away. And if it does have an expiration date, that's not ethical. You know, I, I just want to protect people with gift cards that, that, that are not, that, that don't realize that there might be an expiration date on them. I'm going to give you another example. So if I'm going to close this and I buy gift cards at the radio, I'm sure that they'll honor that. But if I go to BJ Steakhouse, a corporate franchise, I guarantee you, I'll bet you anything, there'll be a, an expiration date on that. Well, I tell you one thing, if I ever uh, buy a gift card for someone, uh, before I buy the gift card, I will ask them a few times, there better not be an expiration date on that gift card I'm buying. Otherwise, guess what? I'm not buying it. Mm. Because it's not on, it's it's dishonest in my book. You just tell the people that you'll go to the competitors. Yeah, I, I, to buy the gift cup and the competitor. Listen, my my uncle Artilio, who is now deceased, Uncle Artilio, who was in the uh, Italian army during the uh, World War II, he fought for he fought for Benito Mussolini. Mm -hmm. He um, when he used to buy a new car from a dealership, he say, uh, uh, "By the way, you want me to buy that car?" Take your take your dealership advertisement off the back bumper of the car. Otherwise, I want you to take a few thousand dollars off the price because I'm advertising for you for free. Right. You're 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 creating a a uh, billboard out of the back of my bumper, and you're getting free advertisement, and you're making me pay top dollar for a new vehicle. Uh, take it off. Oh, oh, you don't want to take it off? Well, then you better take a few thousand off the price of the car because I am advertising for you for free. He wants to be compensated. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is. It's it's true. You're driving around, and the name of the dealership is on the back bumper. Uh, yeah. I call that free advertising. I don't everybody buy these big uh, T-shirts with the big Nike emblem or Adidas or Reebok. <laughs> How big, sneaky! Big letters along the front of the shirt. Oh, talk, talk about oh, sneaky, talk about sneaky, re, sleazy retail wall retail Wall Street uh, 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 pieces of garbage uh, being so sneaky to do that, and people don't even realize they're advertising for free. Yeah, they're paying to advertise. No, absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, I'm holding up my. Um, I thought it was a very durable can opener from Walmart, by the way. But guess what? After a few months, it broke. It broke. What is what is it with all these can openers that I'm buying that break prematurely? Uh, uh, is it possible that products have built-in obsolescence nowadays? It, it broke. Yeah. A few months went by. It fell hey, apart. Remember when you were growing up? Remember like the nineteen. 19 uh, you no, know, I bet you your mother had a can opener from the 1960s or 70s. It probably lasted 20 something years. You know what can opener I'm using now? The one what? from the Dollar Zone, the one with the the, uh, the blade that looks like a parrot's beak, the old fashioned one where you, you're sticking in and, and by oh, hand. Yeah, I like those ones. And you go beep, 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 like the military ones, that, uh, yeah. uh, the, the survival uh, can openers. Yeah. You know, the one, it's got a blade and so you go. Like cans of beans or cans of like Hormel chili. Yeah. Or the, it, the Dinty's beef stew. Uh, yeah, I like crap. Yeah, Dinty more, whatever. It, it's a, it's a, it looks like a parrot's beak. You stick it in the side and like a yeah. lever, you're using leverage or, or you're using a lever motion. You're, yeah. it's opening the can and it, and it opens it up easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm using now. But I mean. It could well, be I think, I think down the dollar zone or the dollar tree. I saw those cubic zirconia by the window. There's a dollar, but yet people are. Uh, how does one get to be a diamond tycoon with hundreds of billions of dollars? Like one man, and then there's another man from Europe, and there's another man from India. They're all billionaires. How?
how were they making all this money off a of diamond? Oh, by the way, Jeff, I am, yeah. as you mentioned, cubic zirconia, I am sticking a large pair of cubic zirconia, jumbo cubic zirconia stud earrings right in front of the camera. And people are, right now, our viewers are able to see the, the aesthetic perfection, the beauty of a cubic zirconia diamond, a fake diamond. So you, you talk about the diamond industry as I'm waving these around. About that these man. Diamond, these diamond tycoons, James, they're telling the banks what to do. Because they have so much money in certain banks that they say, oh, well, I'm not going to pay tax. I'm not going to get on the interest. I'm not going to pay tax. screw you. They'll say, I'll take my money elsewhere. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you're going to report your taxes. Because who, who do you think is protecting these diamond tycoons? It's called the police. Well, how do the police get paid? Through the taxes. <laughs> so they want to be rich, but they don't want to pay taxes. Hey, same thing with uh, shareholders. You know what a CEO can tell the shareholders if, if, if they try to bully him and push him around? Hey, man, you're buying stocks. Stocks are, are, um, are securities. They're speculative. I, I'm not guarantee you. I'm not guaranteeing your rich ass a profit if you're buying common stocks. Wow. Yeah, but look at I, I, when you see the video, people, the people can can view the dazzling beauty of a cubic zirconia diamond, and these are the jumbo ones that I'm showing right now. And uh, you people out there that get suckered into spending five thousand dollars on an engagement ring. You know, like K Jewelers or Jared's or uh, uh, um, or, or Zale or Zales. Zales. I mean, they pay this small rent. When you pay a storefront uh, rent uh, at a mall, a shopping mall, that's not cheap. Well, even even the diamonds sold on a on a, on a main street of any town by a you know a mom and pop jewelry store, you're you're still paying top dollar for real diamonds and mind you mind you people the 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 de beers diamond mining company of south africa they deliberately control the exportation of diamonds so they can control the price they can keep the price up so they can keep the price up they deliberately uh, control it yeah and, and and forget about chocolate diamonds they're probably the cheapest Freaking uh, diamonds! But I find most uh, disgusting, repulsive. That's a very I'm looking for repulsive. Is chocolate diamonds? Yeah. Who wants a brown diamond? It's like it came out of somebody's ass, out of out of their out of their anus. You don't even wear a brown a brown uh, dress shirt. I'd rather have a white dress shirt or a blue dress shirt, not a brown. Dress shirt. Yeah, what woman? Yeah. What woman would want a brown a diamond on her on her finger or around her neck? Gosh, get a red ruby or a green emerald or a purple amethyst or something. Or a, a pretty color. Or a sapphire, a sapphire, which yeah. is a dark blue. Well, aquamarine. Aquamarine. Okay. Now a sapphire and a ruby are the same stones, they're both corundums, except one is red and one is blue. Uh, an emerald is in the beryl family. I, I used to take up gemology, uh, uh, that's why I'm saying this, a um, uh, gemological course. Um, uh, let's see, uh, aquamarine. Aquamarines used to be a semi-precious stone, now they're borderline precious, aquamarines. Uh, you know, people, we are getting viewers, but uh, um, damn it, uh, nobody is uh, commenting or participating, uh, but they sure like to participate uh, when they type, you know, uh, and text in private, and, and, and when they type on that stupid uh, uh, big schnozola Facebook, uh, you know, uh, post, this stupid post that they put. They sure like to type away. Hmm. 
on on social media, but I'll be damned if they type on on a live stream show. And this show is going on YouTube, you jabronis out there. If you didn't know it ahead of time, it's going on YouTube. Uh, damn it! Can never be erased. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look at that. Look at the size and the beauty of these cubic zirconia study study earrings. Ah, you don't need to to pay through the nose for real diamonds. Come on. Come on, consumers, wise up. The Honeymooners, Ed Norton Bell, Thelma, the Thelma Bell. Just think, yeah. with a nice honeymoon, a couple could go on if they buy the Cuban Zirconia and I've spent $5,000 on, on, on flawed diamonds. They can get flawless Cuban Zirconia and have a wonderful honeymoon, plus a down payment on a house. I got an even better idea. Instead of making the poor old man, the the, the Faja, instead of making your father pay twenty, thirty thousand 30000 or more for a wedding reception, why don't you use that money as a down payment on a townhouse or, or a home for, yeah. a ma for a newlywed married couple? Yeah, go, go get married at the uh, city hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really uh, have to. You really have to have. It's not easy anymore. You really have. You broad. You broads really have to have a a a a hand carved ice castle in your freaking oh, wedding God. reception. You really have to drive off in in a in a, a, a an old fashioned uh, horse driven carriage or an Excalibur or whatever the hell you you know. You really. Need to have all this bullshit in your wedding reception? Come on, come on, be honest. With you. God yeah. sake. you know what I'm saying? I, it, it, the goddamn hotel room and, and consummate the marriage for Christ's sake. Jesus and and what's, this, Christ. what's this bullshit, this annoying bullshit at wedding receptions where, where constantly relatives are going ding, 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 ding. ding. They want the, the bride and the groom to kiss. And they're staring at you with a big smile on their face. Bing, 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 bing. Ah, go fuck. fuck. No, that's the credit card you're doing. Fuck yourself. Yeah, but. Enter famous. Fucking mother. Wall Street. Yeah, they're they're always they're always staring down the couple with big grins on their face, going ding, 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 ding. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and you know what the worst is? And if if you got married and you're at at, at your own wedding reception, everybody's asking you. So when are you gonna have kids? When are you when are you gonna give your your parents grandchildren? Why don't you mind your own fucking business? Seriously, mind your own business, you bear. When are you gonna get pregnant? When are you gonna give you when are you gonna have babies? Oh yeah, right away. Ooh, right away. Let's have babies and take all the erotic please. Let's pay off the used car loan. Uh yeah, I mean don't have kids. And then babysit at these while you know the mother and the father have to go to work and they're paying a thousand dollars a month for daycare. Well, what about you know, daycare? What, babysitters? What, what about quality time for the newlywed couple? They have no quality. They have no quality time. You know why? Because at th at th two three in the morning they hear this. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> They got no quality time. They can, nobody's getting laid. Everything, everything. Quicky, 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 quick. Yeah, they're all like you know, they're all changing dirty diapers. There's no, there's no. There's no, there's, there's. Yeah, they're, nobody's getting laid. They're changing dirty diapers. Why? Because. Your idiot relatives are saying, "When are you gonna get? When are you gonna have babies? When are you gonna have children?" Yeah. Well, hey, I got I got news for you. I'm on this earth for me to enjoy life, not to right. not to like dedicate my entire existence to kids that are gonna shove me into a freaking nursing home the first chance they get. Yeah. And 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 they're gonna have their hands. Rubbing together like like two Wall Street tri tribe members, they're going to be rubbing their hands together. Oh, I can't wait to get that inheritance. <laughs> yeah. 
Obama did. Don't go on vacation. Yeah, don't spend the money. Don't enjoy yourself. Keep it at the bank. Keep it at the bank. Yeah, no, no, Dad. What are you, Dad? Mom and Dad. What, what do you? What do you need to? Okay, you're about fourteen years old. Keep, you know, keep it running. <laughs> What do you need to go on a cruise for? You don't want to go on a cruise. No, keep the money sucked away. Stay home. Eat eat rice and beans every day. Oh, yeah. you don't need to go. You don't need to take mom out to dinner. Yeah, they yeah, want so you. Don't pay for the kids down the street to shovel the snow. Yeah, go on and shovel your own snow. Get, get a heart attack, please. Get a heart attack. Uh, assume, assume room temperature, Dad. Assume, <laughs> assume, take a, hey, uh, hey, you know something, you know what's more comfortable than your mattress? The dirt sleep, the big dirt sleep. I know. I'm telling you, people are, people are blood sucking, parasitic, no good, low down. I'm telling you, people. Money, money, money. You know, people, people, these, uh, uh, there's Pollyannas on social media and they think, the world is wonderful. The human race is wonderful. Everything's wonderful. I love everybody. If you go to these, um, hey, look at me, lead me. Yes, if you go to these, uh, 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 these Facebook groups, let's say groups about circular torture, circular training with a steel mace. You know the people that give seminars, and you go there, and everybody's blowing sunshine up each other's ass. Oh, hey, guy, way to go. Hey, big guy, you look great. Oh, yeah, I'm going to that seminar. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, $1,000 a head. Thousand. Ah, thousand. Hold on, I got to blow the whistle. Consumer, consumer, sucker patrol. Please, please blow the whistle. Stop, masher. Stop. Stop that lecherous man. That with the thin mustache has char charged me a thousand dollars and taught me nothing. <laughs> hey, remember that disco song? Bad girls talk of was that Donna Summers? Two two, yeah, beep beep. <laughs> Bad girls, nothing about the sad. Elbows up and elbows down. It, oh, that that mace goes round and round. Thousand dollars, ching ching ching, <whistles> ching ching ching, <whistles> ching ching ching. Uh, Paul Terrace, Walko Winsky charges five hundred dollars for a pair of shit ass clubs. <whistles> oh, beware of the thin mustachioed man from. Mission Viejo. Thousand dollars a head. And he uh, says, all he says is 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock cock. We're going to rock around uh, his cock as it goes into your ass with no lubrication. Going to rock around the cock tonight. And rock around the cartoon and <laughs> that, that'll be a thousand dollars, people. Uh, oh, no, no, we'll give you. No, oh, I'll just buy me dinner. I'll give you a discount. Well, let's make it. Let's make it eight hundred. Oh, you know what? I really like you. I'll only charge you six hundred. I won't teach you anything. I'll just charge you several hundred dollars. You know, say, so bye, bye, bye. You can't. Oh, by the way, if you want spring water, that's another seven hundred dollars. That'll be extra. You. You can't you can't drink spring water after my seminar. Yeah. So now getting to the uh, nitty gritty, uh, the seriousness of the show, because we can go on and on about all the charlatans doing seminars. I mean, I mean, but we can, but and we will. Yeah, but where is that great man from the other side of the world? Where seriously, our jokes are fact. Where is he getting booked after a 30, 30, 30 hour flight. Okay. There is a, okay. There is a man called Kashi Azad, a great Palavan head coach 
of international Polavani competition of Australia and the South Pacific. The great Pol Persian, and he's Persian. He's a real Persian. He's he's flying a squillion miles from Sydney, oh, Australia. Yes. How come no other alternative gym owner in the East Coast or the or or the Northeast? Let's just the say affluent, very affluent, Northeast United States. In the Northeast, where people have more money than people in the South. Anywhere in the world. Yes, they have. They have moolah. They got shkalora. They got it. They got it. How come none of these gyms, none of these MMA gyms, alternative gyms, whatever you want to call, it, none of these gym owners are booking the great Kashi Azad, knowing that he's flying over thirty hours this April to southeastern southeastern con, con, uh, connect cunt, U.S. of A. to 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 perform to perform to do to do his workshop at the great Yuri's gym. How come no one else is booking this great man? You're gonna make this man fly all the way back to Sydney, Australia, you jabronis, after you after he does one workshop for Donna King or Kelly Kelly Calzone. He's gotta fly all the way back to Sydney. Shame on you people. Shame on you people. Seriously, it, it, it's really despicable that no one is coming forth. No one, no uh, uh, alternative gym owner is coming forth to book this man. And I heard today um, that Austin, Texas is one of the most, is one of the more wealthy areas, or affluent areas in the I heard a land of Georgia guy. Yup, yup. They, they got yuppified too. Democrats. How come? How come a landmark in this uh, te high technology of uh, capital of Texas? It is the Silicon Valley of the Southwest. Then, but how come Kashi's not going down there with all that money and all those fitness people down there? But how could? How come the famous? How come the famous landmark known as the Salt Lick Barbecue Establishment in Austin, Texas, have no Wi-Fi? That that's another thing. That's another mission. That's impossible. Austin, Texas. Ask anybody listen to the show. Austin, Texas is one of the most high-tech areas. This is on recording. This cannot be erased. It's on YouTube. It's a permanent record. And it's coming from a permanent quote. Austin, Texas is one of the most technologically advanced cities in the entire world, the planet Earth. Yeah, so how could the Salt Lake have no Wi-Fi so for a certain thinly mustachioed man to go live on YouTube with your Austin, Texas. With yours truly, James P. Madonna, after he made plans, calling me up. Almost uh, every day telling me, we're going to go live from the Salt Lake. James, we're going to go live from the Salt Lake. He's calling me, telling me this. And and then he stiffs me. And just like he stiffed, he basically stiffed us in Lodi, New Jersey. And he, and he begrudged everybody hydration of ice cold spring water presented by the generous uh, Daniel Ramsey of uh, New Breed Fitness. Well, oh, but, oh no, everybody's got to clear out of the gym. Okay, now, now uh, getting back to uh, Kashi Azad, because this is important. You gym owners are fools if you don't book Kashi Azad, really. Think about it. What if you were cramped on, on an airline for that many hours, flying halfway around the world to do one seminar and you know you're a Palavan, Palavani head coach and you're doing a seminar in one gym only to fly all the way back another 30 some odd hours back to Sydney, Australia. Why aren't you booking this great man? This is a- Vince Lombardi 
give us coaching with them around. This is like Vince like, Lombardi like, giving a football. A quality master. Right. This is like if you Vince took Vince Lombardi giving a, 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 a football seminar. This this is this is like if you if you took uh, 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 any group of legends in any given sport and you put them together and they did seminars you don't you don't you don't fly them in halfway around the world to do one seminar it's not yeah, it's, it's an hour back of the Boston Celtics you wouldn't just send him to overseas for one in event I mean. I mean, just think of what what kind of a seminar like that would do for their gym unless unless they are part of that clique that that uses the steel mace and and bullshits people and charges them a lot of money to swing a steel mace. Maybe they don't maybe they don't want to promote real old school Palavani, you know, like Kashi Azad represents the real deal, an honest man that's not gonna rip people off, a man of integrity that you know what he I mean? Used a block of wood to make his Persian meals. Maybe a lot of these gym owners, because I noticed they're part of the clique of greed. You know, that's why some of them post on other people's pages and they don't post on this group uh they post on there because they're part of the terrace uh mi mr the mr mace man and the tear ass click so i noticed certain individuals will post on their alternative circular training pages but they won't post on the International Brotherhood of Palavans because of what we represent. And we represent the kind of honesty and integrity that Kashi Azad represents. And maybe they're just interested in cashing in on people and not really teaching them the proper way to exercise in a circular manner. And they're not really interested in their progress and uh, uh, their, their improvements in, in fitness and how well they do, results. Maybe they're not results oriented. Maybe they're sales oriented. Maybe, maybe making the big, big mamu, like uh, Kramer said on Seinfeld, the big mamu, making the sales is all they care about is profit before people on the planet. Like the diamond cartel. Right. So you see how all this is made. Who financed the diamonds, the consumer purchases. <clears throat> well, do you see how everything we have been talking about, it all flows and, and, and makes an excellent segue into, into uh, uh, being a trainer that cares about the results of his clients Ooh. as opposed to to ripping them off interesting i hey, I'm, I'm staring at another consumer uh, uh fraud it's called the pop-up blocker uh ad block rated number one but uh, on google uh, google chrome number one ad blocker pop-up blocker number one pop-up blocker guess what money 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 guess what jeff get off my page and get out of my house these advertisers and let me enjoy it. I'm not interested in Google or Facebook or yeah, anybody. But it's not making but, money. But listen, this this award-winning pop-up blocker is not doing its job. It's not blocking the pop-ups. Shame, mm. shame on you, ad block. And I'm exposing your ass. And I'm exposing Google Chrome because you are are spamming the crap out of me every day just like facebook spams the crap out of people and uh this yeah it, it that's another uh Chis chiseler's hall of shame inductee is google chrome and the award-winning ad block now getting back to proper form we all know that the gym owners 
are very foolish and very inconsiderate for not booking Kashi Azad. Now, proper form is crucial to maximum results in exercise and to prevent injury. And you're proof of that, Jeff Sambella, because in your workshops of your muscle and ministry with a message, in your workshops, you promote safe exercise with uh, non-ballistic, uh, safe biomechanics, perfect form. And this is how you rehabilitated your shoulder injuries. You rehabilitated your own injuries by not going ballistically with heavy weights, but by concentrating on perfect, proper form. Uh, uh, people don't realize this, that if you take, let's say, a barbell or a pair of dumbbells, and you do it like two seconds up, four seconds down, you know, and one, and two, and three, and four. And you do them like that in strict form, the way you're supposed to. You will get far more uh, uh, better results in uh, muscular strength and power and, uh, and muscular definition than if you would just grab a heavy weight and start throwing it around ballistically and you're going to get injured anyway. It's bound to happen. You will get injured by doing, not doing it in strict, slow fashion. And what people don't realize is you, you build more muscle coming down in the negative or uh, retrogravity portion of the repetition. When you're coming down, you're building more muscle. That's why you're supposed to come down slower, you know. Uh, and the heavy, if, if you take, if you get to the point where you've got a barbell and dumbbell set and, and it all of a sudden, let's say six months down the road, it becomes too light for you. Well, just start coming down slower, like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. When you, when you do the negatives, come down slower. And that's what Bob Hoffman taught in his, uh, 1940s, uh, York system of barbell training. He says when, when, the, when the weight becomes too light, do it slower. Come down slower. Yeah, and uh, you won't get hurt. So, uh, uh, no, uh, but Daniel Ramsey in the New Breed Fitness is awesome. I use a lot of his principles. And actually, today, I actually uh, purchased a couple of um, medicine balls with handles on them. It's like a new type of product. I got a 15 pounder and a 20 pounder. And so Daniel Ram, he says you build your strength as far as like the absorption. So when you're going down, I do like the transverse um, plane, sagittal plane, the funnel plane. And so, and that's in each particular sect is all three planes. Anyways, um, so instead of using a mace, like Daniel taught me, I can also use these medicine balls so I can, with the handles on them. Right. Um, which is like a, like a kettlebell, but, but more, more fun. I mean, lunges and do every single movement that I learned at New Breed Fitness, I can use this product. It's amazing. Now that I'm forced to teach, it's amazing how my brain is clicking in and growing and, and innovating and to be conducive to the environment that I may be teaching that week. And so I teach with the mate, and then I also show how to use other implements. Well, uh, just think of, just think about yeah. how how great. Um, and then, and then the body weight stuff, it's all, it's so safe. And your, the muscles, they're, they're under touch, time under tension. So you're actually building the muscle, but you're also enhancing your cardiovascular system, your functional mobility, everything all at once plus you're exercising your brain because you're going to think through all these patterns 
Because I'm always changing as per Daniel Ramsey. You get, you get thousands of different routines. Thousands. Instead of just a 360, a 10 by 2. No. <laughs> There's so much you can do. Was there, you know what this I reminds use, I use hammers, like copper's hammers. I forgot the, the word. Dead the, blow. Dead blow hammer. The put yeah, dead blow hammers. And then I use um I use um smaller sledge hammers. I use regular sledge hammers. I use um mall hammers with big long hickory handles. I use kettlebells. I use um uh, pairs of dumbbells of different weights to do the the the, the um Indian style um uh, dumbbell swing for like high repage and I'm getting so good at that form that it's it's how to explain but there's all kinds of twisting and movements well, you're supinating and pronating yeah. your wrists, your hand position. Yeah, supinating. and I'm letting the actual, the gravity do all the work, but just by holding on, my ligaments, joints, and tendons are getting stronger. Oh, yeah, supination, pronation. And I can go longer, and it's just, it's a beautiful life-enhancing yeah. team. These 3,000 year old <laughs> discipline. I yeah. use um, 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 a wooden dowel that's about uh, well, six feet long, and it's analogous to a waxwood staff. And I do a lot of these kung fu movements, uh, uh, but the stick is part of my warm up. Um, there's at least five routines that I do with that, and it, it just, man, I'm telling you, the joints and the ligaments and tendons in my body, the more I, I study, the more I teach, the more, the more I do all this stuff every day, it's just, it's so beautiful. I, I wish I knew this, like, 30 years ago. Yeah, well, even when somebody does, I, even I when some... Daniel Ramsey taught me. Yeah. Um, uh, that's not like a hard lunge for middle age where you lose your balance. No, Daniel teaches you how to do it with the with the mace, and, um, and now I'm using those um, uh, the medicine ball with the handle on it as well to teach the men that I'm teaching uh, different things and different ways they can afford to do these things. Especially like a lot of these guys live in apartments; they can't be able a long a long mace because they have you know limited space and. Uh, they have a coffee table, whatever, in the house. And, and so I'm trying to teach them with other implements that I'm using the same principles. I learned a great investment. That is probably the best money I ever spent was going to the Daniel Ramsey um, New Breed Fitness yeah, because uh, he, Certification. Because he has, a, he has a martial arts back. He has a martial arts background. That, that's why he's teaching. I love Daniel Ramsey. You know, I have the most respect for that man. I'm going to tell you, James, because James, I mean, I learned this stuff last June, right? But because I practice it, Daniel just touched the tip of the iceberg. Because if you keep practicing his principles, you can become like him. You can become creative, innovative. And you just discover every day is a discovery. And I'm not kidding you. Yeah. That man has given me a gift. Well, you know, uh, aside from supination and pronation, there is uh, pro when you're doing rowing, when, you, when you're working your back, you're not supposed to use your arms. You're supposed to use pronation and, I'm sorry, protraction and retraction of the scapula. So I do. So your and arms. I, you're, I can hear all the nice little sounds in there. Yeah. It's beautiful. It opens up all the snow yeah. the fluid lubrication is getting in there. Yeah, your arms uh, your arms are supposed to be hooks. They're not you're not supposed to use your arm muscles in back exercises and rowing. And I'm just I'm just saying this for the viewers. Um and also uh 
I believe that with dead blow hammers, sled, uh, 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 sl sledge hammers of various sizes, and the maul hammer, you can, they all can do what Indian clubs, Persian meals, and agata can do, or mace. They can yeah. do what all those tools can do at a tiny fraction of the cost. A tiny fraction of the cost by going to a hardware store. And the head doesn't detach from the handle. Right. And not only that, you know, you're talking about it's people, people that. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about people that live in apartments. You know, it, it, when you're grabbing a hickory handle, you have an outstanding gripping ability uh, compared to these, uh, these uh, steel mace that are being sold where you know there is a possibility in the summertime i don't know if, if they don't have the neurals uh you know well embedded i mean you there could be an accident but i'm just saying that but the hickory handle will never have an accident because think about it if you're a landscaper and you're using a sledgehammer or a shovel or whatever right your hands don't slip no because it's wood and if you're building a railroad in the late 1800s, early 1900s, your hands don't slip on the sledgehammer. No, it's, it's a natural, breathing, porous right. substance. It used to be alive. It used to be part of a tree that could be several hundred years old. And this is what Kashi's trying to teach with his single block, single block Persian meals. It's a living, breathing organism. And, and this is why I, I, I really was so happy that he commented when that, when that jabroni was defending Hel Helder Gandra and his, his rip-off scamming system of making clubs, of gluing planks of wood together, and he came, he, he tore, he tore in, into that guy that I, he's a troll is what he was. He's a... He, oh, the Trojan horse. he was that other guy was the Trojan horse for for Western wood turners who take cheap shortcuts in making Persian meals and Indian clubs. Cheap shortcuts. And this guy was a was a social media troll that dared, dared to defend Helda Gandra's methods. And Kashi Azad came to the rescue of the group. And yeah, and he tore him up because there's all Kashi's right. There's only one traditional, proper way to make a pair of Persian meals, and it's one solid block of seasoned wood that is kiln dried with no sap inside. Not like the uh, like uh, rosewater kinetics uh, taking pine trees and not properly drying them and then some some poor soul uh spends a few hundred hours and then they crack on him uh i know i know there has been there there is a victim in italy of helder gandra a, a very uh, severe victim of helder gandra he wants to keep a low profile he does not want to come forward all i know is if i was ripped off I would be all over the internet cursing that person out, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, let me ask the uh, divining rods. All that mumbo jumbo on Rosewater Kinetics page about the finest wood money can buy, and you are buying elite products. Was that all a brainchild of Paul Terrace Wolkowinski uh, uh, marketing mumbo jumbo? A big yes, it said Jeff. It said a big yes from the divining rods. Uh, I thought I thought that was in Rominsky's terminology because Rominsky has kind of like a, a redneck way of talking. He doesn't. He's not. He's not as articulate in the English language to to put you know to uh, uh, concoct the wording on the website. I knew that was Paul's idea. The the, the clubs that crack um now um the people 
that own these uh, alternative gyms in the United States? Do they have their eyeballs, instead of focusing on a real polyvon like Kashi Azad, do they have their eyeballs on the people that are into ripping others off with steel mace seminars? A big yes. So they don't really give a fuck. Just like Bally's Total Fitness and, and Gold's Gym, you know, any, any nationally advertised franchise health club. So these alternative gyms that, that use the word MMA, they don't really give a fuck about the results of their clients, do they? No. Big, a big no. Oh, yeah, big no. They don't give a shit. So all they care about is the bottom line and signing up members and grabbing miss, their money. Hmm. A big yes. Misleading people. Yes. They do. They have a. a are they path uh, um, uh, like sociopaths that have feel no remorse when they rip people off? Yes. So. Does this is this the same mentality as those sleaze bags on Wall Street, the Wall Street scum? Mm. Yes. <laughs> mm. Jeff. Very sad. very 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 sad world. Now, Jeff Sambello's muscle and ministry with a message of teaching people the truth and the right way to exercise and the right way to eat and the right way to live. In the long run, will Jeff Sambello reap the harvest of many blessings compared to these other scallywags? Yes, you will reap the harvest of many blessings. That's what I thought. And will Jeff eventually get booked in other uh, church locations down the road? A big yes, a yes, and and who knows where that will lead to? But I tell you one thing: if you're honest and, and you're a person of uh, and you're preaching God's word and you're and you're honest with people, it's a. Tell me something, divining rods. Just like Jesus had a small flock, is this unfortunately the, the destiny of the honest and good? person is to have a small flock yes yes but isn't it isn't it better to have a small flock of devoted quality clients than people that just show up willy-nilly at every damn seminar like uh camel toe uh dina engard Yes. So, so you, it's better to have dedicated, devoted, quality clients than to have people just come and take photographs and say, look, look where I showed up. I, I, I show up everywhere. You know, uh, on my husband's uh, dime, of course. Yeah. All right. Very good. Is, is there anything you like to ask the divine words? Any any curiosity you have, uh, Mr. Zambello? Oh, um, I, I've had a heck of a good show. I mean, I'll tell you, I, this Dana Ramsey, he's just an incredible teacher. And he really he taught basic principles that if you practice his method, you can apply it to everything. I can't explain it to you. It just, I could take a... a a piece of furniture in my living room right now, and I can make that into a tool. Like I, it's just amazing. Well, Daniel, um, Dan, I really hope that Daniel Ramsey Ramsey uses his special workshops and, or seminars as a way of of drawing attention to his new breed fitness gymnasium. I think. He already has the venue, Jeff Zambello. It's called New Breed Fitness. The man 
the man teaches light years more information than any of these other uh, uh, steel mace. He has great client retention. People. I mean, and very loyal people. And because he's a man of character. And affordable, and and he's a, and he is really yeah. affordable. He, he doesn't rip people off. No, but he gives, he gives, he gives, he gives. He's a giver, not a taker. He really is the man. I can't say enough about that man. He's one of the highest ethical people I've ever met. Yeah, because you have to live in the same city as that man. Because he is. He is a, a true martial arts person. He 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 doesn't he doesn't just talk the talk. He walks the walk. Right, just like William Carvani, the same thing. These people. He's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he's a great person. He practices Gata every day, every day, Listen. three hundred sixty-five days a year. And he makes. He he's an expert at making homemade goddess like 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 Ken Thiessen. See, these, yeah, why don't they like real goddess in in uh, Southern California? These are glitchy things. Well, uh, because because of what the thinly mustachioed man I, says, they they they, like they they turn their nose uh, up at uh, all the snooty snobby uh, uh, women with money and and tight spandex. They turn their and nose we, up. You know, I mean, McGuire would like to use a gata. They're, hey, Ken Thiessen told me he has no problems getting his clients uh, uh, down to the to the clay sand pit with the hoe digging, digging, and or climbing right. rope. He, 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 another great person. He doesn't have any problem getting his clients to do old school Akara training. Ropes or, or do whatever. Yeah. Right or swinging concrete. Homemade jewelries, uh, 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 Indian jewelries. Homemade um, Bulgarian bags made of tire tubes. There you go. They they don't have any problem. He doesn't have any problem because there are people. We in Brooklyn, Florida, which has a hell of a lot more money than any place in Southern Listen. California. Brooklyn, Florida is one of the most affluent places. But how come uh, uh, Bulgarian bags and tire tubes are good enough for those people? But not good enough in Southern California. With the to swing a gata. These well, oh, well they need to get the wrong message. Maybe if somebody promoted well, gata. You know what? Maybe, maybe all these Japanese in Southern California would, would use a gata. Well, there or maybe that's misinformation. There are people, and I'm sure there's many out there, that would respect hardcore training with old fashioned hardcore equipment. I am sure there are plenty out there. Now, if you got, if you got some, they're not getting a kickback hey, from a funding company. You're the coach. I, I'm, I mean, you or me. If you're a trainer that that's worth his his or her salt, okay, and you got some rich, snooty, snobby person who says, "I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not." Hey, so wait a minute. You got to be the alpha. I'm the trainer here. You hired me to do a job. You hired me to get results. You're going to do what I tell you. But no, you got the thinly mustachioed man worried about, oh, they're going to fire me. He's worried He's worried about sucking up to these rich hoity-toity people. And, and you're supposed to be in charge. Did Vince Lombardi uh, 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 shiver in his timbers? Uh, if one of his uh, football players, you know, uh, wanted to do things their way, you know, absolutely not. Or and Bill, guys that weighed close to three hundred pounds. Or Bill Bella is Bill. Did, does Bill Belichick take any crap from from no. his players? Hell no. no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. And neither did Don Shula. That's right. Uh, 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 and um, yeah, Don Shula who started with the legendary Baltimore Colts and went to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, uh, um, you know, these people, uh, um, 
these people, uh, Don Madden uh, of the old Oakland Raiders, right? Matt, Coach Madden. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, I mean, these people didn't take crap. They, they were the coach, and they let people know they were the coach. You know, and that's how you have to be as a trainer. You know, you can't be like. When I present it to my, to my students, I say, I said, here is a curtain rod. It's the wooden dowel. I said, you can buy this for seven dollars at Home Depot. Seven dollars plus plus uh, sales tax. I said, this thing is my most important tool, and I spend at least. 15, 20 minutes of each of my classes going through different routines with this stick. And it stretches everything out from my forearms, my fingers, my my scalpula, my rotator cuffs, everything. Hey, I wonder I wonder if it comes in different dollars. I wonder if the dowel, the curtain rod dowel comes in different types of wood. Maybe, maybe, maybe some are harder than others, or heavier. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, if, if you're if you're working at a coat rack, you know, you remember the girls in the 1980s that you get like freaking five dollar tip to get your goddamn coat at the dance club. I'm sure when you have like a million coats, uh, you know, yeah. a piece of wood, whatever, right? Well. Um, Oh, anyway, I don't want to digress, but I'm just saying, I tell these guys, I said, you know, and then I gave them the full, the, like, uh, yoga mats, right? And then we do stuff on those, the awesome uh, m mobility routines. Uh, I'll tell you, James, you can, I can get a paint can, right? And I can do routines, instead of buying a medicine ball, I can get a can of paint that weighs a few pounds and I can do a routine with those things. I I, I can use anything. Yeah. I can use a rock and my quarry that well, weighs 20 pounds, 30 pounds, or 5 pounds, or 10 pounds. Well, you know, you know what? I had a conversation with this trainer that was absolutely ripped to shreds with definition and he says, I don't lift heavy weights. He says, I could take a pair I could take a pair of lighter 25 pound dumbbells and and when I when I use them in strict form going slowly he says yep. I, I could get much better results with that than yep. than with heavy weights. Exactly. And you talk about doing a, a dumbbell rows never do it with heavy heavy weights. I tell you yeah. you can pull some serious muscles yeah. in it. The well, region. well, you know what? If you got a pair of lighter sledgehammers, you could do uh per oh, you could do Persian. Pound. There's things I could do with a four pound sledgehammer that I can hardly do this because it's heavy. If you use the leverage the correct way, well, they, they there's stop it, make it easier. Well, a pair of four pound dead blow hammers, I think has much more torque than any Indian clubs made. Exactly. Made. And, and what about Persian clubs? If you use a pair of sledgehammers, you have much more torque with them. If you're doing the, the trick. That's why they tear down old houses. You ever see, you ever see a, a bunch of carpenters do house yeah. renovations and yeah. they rip down walls with sledgehammers? Yeah. That's a lot of torque. Well, I'm saying, if, like, if you want to do traditional Persian, uh, yeah, exactly. Persian, there's a lot of torque and power in leather ridge. Yeah, when so you could do Persian club swinging, traditional Persian club swinging with a pair of sledgehammers. You don't have yeah. to, you don't have to spend four or five hundred dollars or more on a pair of wooden clubs. You don't. But they're pretty. <laughs> oh, but they don't look gorgeous. Yeah, they I don't look right. pretty. Because they look so pretty. And that's why I bought them. Because there was a certain someone who got the first pair of signature series that said, I need those. I need those. Well, they're functional. Well, look look at look at the medicine ball with the handle. You but, you could not only do <laughs> You, I'm to be to buy the well, listen, you can not only do 
uh, kettlebell swings with them, but you can throw them up in the air and catch them as, as it's coming down, like a medicine ball. You can catch them. James, I could do sagittal planes and transverse planes and then take it you know, at, at waist level and then push it over my head to the right side, to the left side, and get shoulder routines in the same routine I just get my legs in. Are, are they... Are they shopping there are a thousand extra sizes i can do are, i can dating yeah. with them are they are they a leather rear lunges front lunges side lunges i'm telling you Jen, i can do russian twists i can do everything with these friggin things are they um are they leather uh, uh are James, they roughly 30 dollars a piece are they leather or, or like vinyl, or what are they exactly? They're like a hard rubber. Oh, okay, okay. And how 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 heavy do, do they go up to? They can go up to about 30 pounds. I got a 15 pounder and a 20 pounder. Well, that's not bad. 30 pounds is a not, not a bad size. Yeah, but I, I want to do stuff that I can do good reps in good form. I don't need to be a big show off me man. If I wanted to show off how strong I am, I'll do a deadlift. But I learned from when I get too heavy of medicine balls or too heavy of certain functional training implements, it's not for me. It's like I'm not meant to swing a 35 pound mace. Well, because Just Zambello, yeah, on record, is meant to do a 15 pound mace. And a twenty pound mate. Well, because Period. because of the vulnerable because twenty pound of yeah. max, and it protects my elbows, my shoulders. Well, because it yeah, my lungs and my heart. It's beautiful. Well, because of the vo the vulnerability of the shoulder joint, it's so vulnerable. And my forearms get a beautiful pump when I use fifteen pounds or twenty pounds. I don't need to use a thirty five pound mate. So who's going to be in the hospital when I get an Arnold chip? That's true. Nobody. Heroes. All of the Arnold, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the Arnold Classic, whatever the hell it's called. Goddamn golf. Fucking show off. Well, there aren't they on the juice? The there ones that are, aren't, aren't they on the juice? The steroids, on steroids? No, the, no, 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 no. These are good guys. They're just they're misled. With the egos, you shouldn't be swinging a thirty-five pound freaking mace. Oh, you're talking about. Uh, you're talking but about. I, I yeah, okay, okay. Weighs like four hundred pounds, maybe. Him. Yeah, you're talking about the people that uh, uh, think about higher numbers instead of quality. Yeah, that's true. If you're such a, if you think you're such an athlete, go do a real sport or play tennis against another top tennis player. But don't tell me how cool you are because you're swinging a 35 pound mace. You're a nobody. Really. Do a real sport. Play softball for the local restaurant team or something. Then I'll respect you. See, people have to realize, people, oh, people, people have to realize just how, just how vulnerable the, sho the shoulder joint is. Nobody. You know, it's like, this is why our shoulders can do what it does. And your elbows. Your elbows can't take on that torque. Elbows. I mean, I'm calling out everybody. Call me out. Well, look at the, look at the, the tall, Call me out. look at the tall mustachioed man who, uh, who, who brags about uh, how that, you know, that, oh, a 50 pound mace is getting, uh, is too. He says well, that. one person that does a 65 pound mace. I respect him. You know what I'm talking about. But he also is very strong naturally. Ken Thiessen has legs as thick as a tree. And I'm not kidding you. The guy is strong as well. Well, you're talking, about, you're talking about a man who's close to 250 pounds of uh, solid uh, muscle. Really soft. And I'm not trying to butt him up with Ken Thiessen. Ken uh, Thiessen's the real thing. But not everybody's a Ken Thiessen. I mean, when Ken Thiessen, I mean, when Ken Thiessen takes his homemade, when he takes his homemade goddamn and weighs it on a scale in a video, and he zooms in on, on the, the numbers on the scale, he zooms in, and he shows you 75 pounds. 
And then, but nobody, nobody's booking him. What the fuck? Now I'm getting mad. Nobody's booking Ken Thiessen. Then he picks. Listen. Then. He then he, he, he rope ladders, 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 ropes, ropes. He he does a, he does like that obstacle course they have in the military. Yeah, and the guy weighs two hundred fifty pounds. He has these hundred and fifty pound weaklings swinging a goddamn thirty five pound mace, which has no business of doing. And then they wonder why they have elbow tendonitis. Elbow surgery multiple times. They're not Ken Basin. Well, you, you so why don't people, why don't these sissies and these fakes book Ken Basin, who's a real athlete? Right. Well, you've seen how many how many reps he did hey. with it. You saw how many reps he did with a seventy five pound gata that he yeah. made. He did it. He did it with ease. But that's that's a two hundred fifty. Like Terrio. Oh, that guy! You know that king. That's why I said that King Scepter, that looked all pretty and everything. They look like a dildo. It reminded me of a dildo. Oh, Ken Thiessen's the real deal, and Ken Thiessen not only wasn't a fake wrestling coach. Ken Thiessen's a real professional wrestler. He got paid to wrestle. Right, and a grappler too. He's a grappler also. Wrestling coach, my ass. What the fuck? I'm a fool. Why? I did a fucking lie about, and you did your coaching. Why? A, why? This is a high school. Please, why is Yuri's gym? I'm not. It's not That's Yuri's. Right. It's not Yuri's fault. It's the liar. Why is Yuri's gym being booked with so many ham and eggers? Really? I mean, <laughs> I, when you think about it, you know. I mean, all right. No, I'm, I don't mean like Kashi is the only. I, I'm Nathan. Yeah, Ka Kashi is. I'm losing my point. I'm I know. Up. Listen, Kashi, you need some uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, Kashi is the. I'm your bully. Somebody call me. I'm still. I'm not a bully. I'm a real person. Kashi is the f first and only person who has the credentials to do a seminar at Yuri's gym. Period. Uh, and the is a great tool, and uh, uh, Steve Angel uses the Hahnemann all the time. Yeah. And who else uses the Hahnemann? The great wrestler. You, you know, I stopped listening to Taras ever since he did that video about keeping your hands separated. I, I just lost respect. I just, and you know, and then he, you know, he don't have the decency to contact you, him and Mike Rominski didn't have the decency to contact you to apologize for selling you defective merchandise and charging you all that money for clubs that crack. Didn't even have the decency to give you store credit or a coupon or, or, or offer you a, a partial refund, nothing. So between, between keeping his hands separated because, because Kelly uh, feels like doing it, right? All right, and he's smitten with her. So keeping the hands separated and not even respecting a customer like you. No, no, no. Kashi is the only book and thesis and book Kashi Azad and book William Calvani. Exactly, and and the black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Which is a very, very tough sport. And, like and a real sport. William Calvani fights against or competes against real men, not and, fake. Right. And and also Daniel Ramsey should should go Daniel on the road. Daniel Ramsey is one of my favorite people. I respect that guy so much. He should do he should go on the road also and get booked doing seminars. Or 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 just really promote his his workshops at the gym. I'm going to promote Daniel Ramsey as much as I can. Because, you know, he, as far as an, as, as far as an, as far as blue collar, old school training with results, 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 results. As far as an education goes, these are the people that will give it to you. Daniel Ramsey are one of the top for education. 
for, for actually training, educating his clients, students, at the top. Lodi, New Jersey, Garibaldi Avenue, Lodi, New Jersey, New Breed Fitness. Then you have the others, William Calvani, Ken Thiessen, Kashi Azad. Well, Daniel Ramsey is, he's not all glossy. He doesn't have that guy all fancy carpeting. He doesn't have like fancy pictures all the He's old school, blue collar, real, real, real results. That's Mike right. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman results. Yeah, because he's an intelligent man that applies because he applies science to his training of physical fitness. He he's not a numbskull. He's not an imbecile. Hey, this no. week alone, just this I had to create is what computer is he? Next week I'll have even more routine. Just because of what Daniel Ramsey taught me. Well See, Daniel Ramsey teaches you how to learn. I don't know if that makes sense. It's kind of weird. Like, yeah. Some people teach you the mechanics of something, but Daniel, when he teaches you, he teaches you how to innovate. Well, you, you know what that? You know what? You know what this reminds me of? I was watching on Netflix an old. I was watching every old kung fu movie I could find. I watched one where the man developed a brand new form of kung fu based on the work he was doing the labor he was mm -hmm. he was building scaffolding out of bamboo and he wow. was as he was tying the scaffoldings you know when the joints come together as yep. he was tying them he was using the scaffolding like a wing chun wooden dummy he was like he was going ha, fu, 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 like, like every movement Every movement of the labor he was doing, the job, he converted into a martial arts training routine. So it reminds me what you're doing. You're you're being creative. You could turn anything into an I'm exercise. Gonna, I'm, I'm gonna post a video tomorrow. I'm just telling you, the, the guy is unbelievable. Well, this uh, I'm fascinated about this uh, medicine ball with the handle, Jeff. I'm I'm really fascinated by that. But but listen, listen. It is the ball, and then the handles are part of the ball. Okay, they're round as the ball. The handles don't stick out. What they did was they carved into the medicine ball. To make handles. Oh, okay. I'm sure. Like you have a, it's, it carved into the ball. Now you have handles. Oh, Does really? That make sense? Oh, so so it's one molded. It's one solid piece. Yes, it's a round item, and then they carved right into it. Really? The handle. It, it, when you see the story. Yeah, you go to go, you go on oh. Amazon right now. Look, look up medicine okay. ball with medicine. Okay. Medicine what the hell is this? All right, so it's like a, it's like a sumtola. I don't know what you're you know, a sumtola has the handle carved right into the log, into the wood. Exactly. Like a sumtola, exactly. like exactly. a sum, like a sum. It's better than that. Um, it's more like it, it, yeah, that, you'll see it tomorrow. Anyway, the bottom line is Daniel Ram. I can I can apply Daniel Ramsey's principles with the mace, but for somebody who doesn't have um, who's in close quarters, like say a little a small a studio apartment or something, right? Um, and they don't want to bang the wall. Well, I have the perfect solution based on, I'm giving the credit to Gina Ramsey, not Jeffrey Zambello. I'm giving credit and homage and tribute to Daniel Ramsey because he taught me the principles. So I can yeah. innovate. Well, what you do is post the link to the company that makes them tomorrow. Also, also. Oh, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say about Gina Ramsey now that I think about it. 
Daniel Ramsey is a composer who teaches his students to be composers. Right. Does that make sense? Or it'd be like a, a, a famous book author teaching students how to be, how to write their own books. Um, yeah, I understand. He, he, he makes you into a leader, into a creator, not a follower. He, he also te teaches you He's how to. able to give to people. He, I'm able to give people knowledge because Daniel Ramsey taught me how to be yeah. a leader and how to give people knowledge well he also teaches you how to create how to be creative yeah so that's a very special type of teacher true true and you know what and uh to teach people how to think on their own and be teach creative how to teach. and be creative and to teach because you know uh, you want your students to emulate you uh uh, uh to be uh, a certain somebody really doesn't want that because I guess some guy that has a Singapore wife, a very beautiful wife from Singapore, is not was uh, discouraged from teaching in Dubai. Whatever, and anyway, I don't want to give that crap. All right, that, 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 that's petty bull crap. Well, there are people that Dana Ramsey's special because Dana Ramsey wants yeah. you to teach other people. There, there are people that do it for ego and profit, and then there are people that do it. Very unselfishly, unselfishly. And he really said I could come to his gym for free for the rest of my life because I took his certification class. How many people would do that? And if I wanted to ask Daniel Ramsey a question about teaching, he, 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 he all I have to do is write to him or give him a, he, Daniel Ramsey gave me his personal phone number. And I could actually call Daniel Ramsey. Let me ask you a question. Uh, does his New Breed Fitness uh, Facebook page allow you to post, let's say, a video of your workshop? I don't know, but I could send him something on the messenger, and then it's up to him if he wants to post. Yeah, it. I mean, if you, yeah, like, like if you, if you. I do that out of respect. It's not for me. Yeah. It, like, so I'm not like Jay Ricardo, yeah. who uh, says uh, he's going to come on to the Puerto Rico Polygon page and change the format. Well, as far as I know, James P. Madonna, whoever that is, was the founder and the creator of the Polygon page. I think a person should go to James P. Madonna, whoever that person is, and ask him permission to change the format yeah. of what James P. Well, he. Um, well, creative? he was demanding of me to change the whole format of the group. He, in, the, in other words, he don't want me to tell the truth about people. If he look, if he wants to blow sunshine up everyone's ass, create your own, create your own, create your own page. Create your page. Nobody's stopping you. Look, he can put a he can put an image of Barney the dinosaur. I love you. You love me. You know what I mean? Do that. Patty do it. Cake, Patty cake, baker's man. Diddly diddly do. His brains are made of poo. Yeah. Because he is nothing but a groupie for the. Spinning wheel, gotta go round. Rick Brown and Kelly are crying, sing. Ride a painted, ride a painted pony. Let the spinning wheel spin. That's right. Elbows up, elbows down. Elbows down. Spin, spinning gotta. Go ahead, sing. Elbows up, elbows down. Keep those hands together while the mace goes on. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. 
Oh yeah, the, the carnival music, the carnival music. Oh, that's right, that's right. And I'm gonna find a carnival song, non-copyright, for the next show. But a little, a little. The ice cream truck music. You remember the ice cream truck in the Okay, now it's time for the bosun's whistle. And I want to tell everyone that Jeff Sambello's great one and only workshop will be tomorrow morning at his a church. And I will be posting an instructional video in tribute and in homage and out of respect to Daniel Ramsey of New Breed Fitness tomorrow. That My favorite teacher. Right, that is right, and you and and your workshop will be uh, your biggest workshop is is Saturday mornings, right? Yes. And that will be tomorrow. Uh, oh, and, yes, absolutely, and also before you know it, uh, Jeff Sambello will be video recording his workshops and uh, and showing people that you can take anything with resistance. Anything. squat with the where the ball is up against the wall and and you lean backwards into the ball I love that well you know that squat came from originally came from martial arts wow without but yeah, they I believe it because um, if you do wall squat those things burn the hell out of your front quadriceps yeah yeah and 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 your your ass and your and your hamstrings they get a workout too your yeah. your gluteus maximus uh you know, if you ladies out there want a perfect butt, don't get don't get butt implants from a plastic surgeon. Do do the right uh, uh, leg exercises, uh, lunges and squats, and you'll get a perfect butt. All right, here's a simple one. Okay, ladies, you know, first of all, you're not allowed in my my class because nothing else. I love women. I love 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 women, but uh, I think it's only appropriate if a woman teaches a woman. Anyways, um, because they won't listen to you, they won't listen to you on yeah. her couch, puts her feet flat on the floor, so she's sitting down, lift your butt off, off the floor. You can hold her the top, squeeze your glutes, bring it down. Don't touch the ground with your butt, but keep up maybe an inch off the ground, go up again. And uh, that's just one of many things. Yeah, so you show um, your shoulders. I'm going to do a video. Yeah. It's going to be pretty comprehensive. I'm so, going to do a whole bunch of them right. because people don't want to watch a 10 minute video. They'd rather watch 10 one minute videos. Like, oh, <laughs> no, no, don't think like that. That's what Rick Brown used to tell me that people have a short attention span. The hell with them. The hell with people. They must get an education. We, we must, they must be forced to be educated. Right. Again, I'm going to put 10 one-minute videos up. All right, well, that's your, that's your, you know, it's your, it's your baby. That way the people can, can scroll backwards and see, oh, okay, yeah, I see, okay. Doing a, a pilot um, uh, plank or, or um, uh, the bird dog. You know the yoga position, the bird dog, etc., yeah. um, etc. Et so, um, and all these things are movements. 
Anyway, uh, you can end the show. I could talk for an hour on this bus. All right, all right. Not another word. Yeah. Another, in other words, you wanted. All right, it's your baby, but man, it's your baby. You want to do one, uh, one minute? I know you're thinking. I agree with you. Yeah. But what I want to do is I want to help people. Yeah. And I, well, you look your side myself, and I think the way I do it is more conducive for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And other people could do longer things. Well, I have I have a personal quirk about attention span in you in human beings. I think yeah, I got it, but I want to teach people. Yeah, like in other words, when you were in college, you were able to focus on your studies. That's I have self discipline. Right. I don't have a hyperactive motivational speaker. Yeah, I mean, 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 I uh, claim to have a very short attention span. That's that's like um, that's adolescent. That's not mat uh, a mature adult. It, it has the ability to focus and and. Well, as I you swear that on Steve Jobs. This damn iPod and iPhone yeah. and wreck communications and wreck social correspondence with people. And social sorry, social interaction. Uh, everybody's got earplugs in their ears. And they block out other people. Oh, wait a minute. They do that in Canada. I was brought up. Wait a minute. They do that in Canada too? Oh, yeah. That that oh, yeah. that's they, very that's they, that's they, very All the young people have earbuds. That's very ear. wait a minute, that's very antisocial. In my it's opinion. Very antisocial. You know, it's like, oh, heaven forbid a man should hit on a hot-looking 21-year-old chick. Oh, poor thing's getting hit on. That's what the hell, they put, God put two, uh, made two genders of every creature on this planet. Right. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? What's worse is they got people with the earbuds in their ears are texting on a machine in between sets, they're sitting on the machine. Oh my gosh. And you can't say anything to them. Because they need to kick out of the gym. Now if you did this back in the 80s and the 90s, <clears throat> before Steve Jobs had all this crap, then I blame everything on Apple computer. Listen, I listen my, computer. my I friend. I pardon the iPhone. I blame everything on that. My friend Jimmy Le... I'm sorry, uh, this. He's a T-Mobile, whatever the hell he My I mean, my friend Jimmy Le on these devices. My friend Jimmy Laguari that I will see later, he tells me at his gym there are these young girls that come in with tons of makeup on, big earrings, spandex, and you know what that the chick was doing? She was doing she does a few repetitions and then she looks at herself in the mirror and she drinks spring water. She takes a few sips of water. And she's looking at herself in the mirror. She's got lipstick. Oh, let me check my lipstick. And then she got the eye makeup on. Then she does a few more repetitions. Bing, 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 bing. And then she looks in the mirror again, takes a, take, uh, takes a sip of the spring water. He says, what the hell kind of a workout is this? This is, you know, this is, you know what it is? It's a tension. Like that should be home, literally. Washing their boyfriend's underwear or washing their, their husband's underwear in the laundry. But you know what that? Just being at the goddamn gym. But that's not day. that's not a workout, Jeff. That is attention getting. They want attention. Please look. You're not getting it from me. You know, I get it from people who are normal. Listen, if like you who are normal people that go to a a dingy, roughneck, hardcore gym. Where people go to actually compete in sporting events, that you don't see girls like that in a hardcore no. gym. There's a woman in my gym. She's in her fifties. She she deadlifts three hundred twenty pounds for up. She's right. in good shape. She's not like a muscle girl. Not for it. She's a nice, she's a nice lady. She's friendly. 
but she doesn't right. but she doesn't go in with tons of makeup. No, no, no. She's just normal person. Tons she of loves production. Look, chin up, everything. Tons of makeup and spandex and with a camel toe showing and the crack of her ass showing. She don't do that. You don't need that shit. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Oh, 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 you know what I saw? You know what I saw in the store yesterday, last Please. night? They were selling special yoga bags to put your yoga kit in it and zip it up. But, and it has a little strap that you fling it over your back. Oh, how cute. You've got a little thing for it. And they're all pretty colors, you know, and they're all fancy. You know what? It, it, Save that stuff for your husband. It's real not. I'm not joking, Jeff. I'm not to be funny. I'm serious. I'm not laughing. Please, woman. Save all that stuff for your husband. When you go to the gym, wear kind of loose clothes. This and that. The guys are trying to work out, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Please. Save it. I'm a psychologist, you know, please. Arnold Schwarzenegger said the key, in his old book, The Education of a Bodybuilder, he says, never dress to show off. Only dress for comfort. For comfort. Wear yeah, loose, like, loose, loose yeah, clothes. Yeah. It, it, I'm going to jail. I don't want to be distracted by some girl uh, crevice, right? Or, right. Or, or cleavage, right? And then that makes me weak. Then I'm going to bench press or squat each other. I'm weak. Or if I'm, I'm actually jacked up on testosterone, natural, natural testosterone for my testicles, because I got a freaking boner at the gym. I don't need to have a boner in the gym. Okay? So. That's true. You're that's, absolutely right. No, no. So judge me. Listen. I'll tell the truth. If they want to be. Keep it to your husband. If they want to be a cock teaser, do it in a dance club. Don't do it in a gymnasium. Oh, but I'm going to dance club. Oh, I'm going to play this. Do you want to dance? Oh, I'm going to play this. Yeah, they're breaking. Yeah, they're breaking. I'm, yeah, I'm engaged. I'm engaged. No. You know what they're engaged with? You know what they're you know what they're engaged with? Going down on their girlfriends. That's what they're engaged with. Something. I'm telling you, James. Don't go to the nightclub. Well, that's a waste. That's a, uh, hey, you I know, know you know what I tell people? If you're gonna if you're gonna dance, dance with a, a girl that you're involved with. This way, yeah. you know you're not wasting your energy dancing all night long. Dancing doesn't guarantee you. I think I'll put drinks with the girls, then go to a nice lounge at a restaurant. Yeah, they, 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 they have a nice lounge. Uh, and they got a nice TV. Uh, I'll go to uh, Blackjack Mulligan, go for a treatment. Dancing. A nice little, uh, nice little uh, uh, shepherd's pie or those uh, the slider hamburgers or cheeseburgers. Don't go to a dance club. No, dance, dancing doesn't, dancing at a dance club with strangers doesn't guarantee you anything. Yeah. You're, okay. not, you're not guaranteed a damn thing. <laughs> hey, you know how you know how Mike you know how you know how William Morrow, the commercial voiceover guy, used to get laid all the time. He pick oh. he pick a spot, he pick a bar stool in front of uh, big screens that were playing uh, football games or baseball, or whatever. He watch, he talk about sports, he, he just talk to people, have his drink, his beers, talk, make conversation. And then, and then, if somebody liked them, they 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 walked up to him. They started talking to him. He, he didn't he didn't go out. He he didn't go on a dance floor dancing with everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's a waste. It's stupid. It's like it doesn't. I mean, it's it's nice if a guy's a good dancer, but save it for your girlfriend if you have one, or you know if you find one that dances. You know, I mean, salsa can be excellent aerobic exercise. Learning salsa or ballroom dancing, excellent aerobics. Uh, but but anyway, listen, you you got to uh, do your Bible study and you got to go to bed. Yeah, uh, you know, wash off my filthy mouth with soap. You know what? I do swear 
and I use uh, swear words like a longshoreman, but you know what? I do have love in my heart, and I'm a humble man. That's true. Your heart is in the right place. You all you want. You're, you're sincere. Point finger at me, right? There's three fingers pointing back at you. Yeah, but there's, you know how many, you know how many honest, sincere, good people uh, are are capable of like cursing, and there's still there's still decent people that you could trust, you know, as your friend that you know you could rely on them as your friend, you know, and 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 also they're they're not malicious, they don't do anything but bad. Talk is with a nice soft voice. Oh yeah, I, I woke up. Oh yeah, um, yeah, at four o'clock and ten o'clock and seven o'clock. Hey, all the all the men of the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they 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 were worse than everybody I know. They had concubines, they had yeah. sex slaves. You name it. I mean, they had multiple uh, wives, multiple uh, gu gumadas, whatever girlfriends, or whatever. Yeah, gumadas, I love it. I, I, and Israel was a gumada. I love it, James. That is cool. The, the gumada, the, 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 yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, I hope we g we gave people an education. Then, then, then the mother, the grandmother's like, get home to your wife. Never mind that Gumara. <laughs> oh, what was that, Moonstruck? Cat. What was that, Moonstruck? Cat. Get away from the cat, your wife just called. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that was, wasn't that Moonstruck with Cher and, uh, um, and uh, uh, Nicholas Cage? Uh, uh, Danny. I only is that his name? That was Vin Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, and Vin I only in chair. And and, and Vincent Olympia Dukakis. And Vincent Gardinia was the father. The, Vincent Gardinia, exactly. The late the late Vincent Gardinia, who, who I think he was never married. He died as a bachelor. Oh. Yeah, about you know there's a flower called a bachelor's button, but I, I digress. I, I you know, but anyway. But anyway, anyway here, here we go, Boston's whistle, brother. Arr. And I hope you enjoyed our uh, knowledgeable, universal, uh, intergalactic pirate ship. We will see you next time on, on our show. Bye bye. Bye bye, Chief. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.